Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review auction listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Land Cruisers. And we do this in order to identify common issues that show up on these vehicles as they age. We do it to make sure the sellers are disclosing everything, at least to the extent that we can tell from the photos and the videos. And we also just like talking about these Land Cruisers. They're great vehicles, and yeah, I'd assume you're here because you like them too. Uh, or you're in the market to buy one, and hopefully these videos can be helpful in that case. Let's go ahead and look at the vehicle we're going to study today, which is this 1997 Lexus LX450. Uh, so this has the 4.5 liter uh, 1FZ FE. And yeah, so this one's bid up to uh, $12,300. It's got six days left. It is located uh, just around the corner from me in San Leandro, California. So that's in the San Francisco Bay Area. And yeah, let's go through the details here on the right. Remember the LX5, or excuse me, the LX450 was uh, sold in 96 and 97, well, for the 96, 97 model years, and it's got a couple differences over the Line Cruiser version. Um, this was like the closest the Line Cruiser and the LX have ever been, uh, was in this uh, yeah, 96, 97 time frame, and then over the years, they have continued to you know grow apart. But you've got plastic cladding here on the bottom of the doors. Uh, you've got uh, kind of like a little bit different grill here, and there's some other differences in the interior. But otherwise, more or less the same vehicle, same vehicle mechanically. Uh, but yeah, let's go through the details here. Oh, and you get these really cool chrome rims with the chrome wheels with the, uh, with the LX450. Uh, everything looks pretty normal here. It does not have um, the three locking differentials, the front, center, and rear. It looks like it just has the center, as most of these will come with. And yeah, let's go ahead and jump in the details here in the uh, kind of the middle, because there's yeah nothing really there on the right side that's out of the ordinary. Uh, so it spent time in Arizona and California and was acquired by the seller in September 2022. So, yep, I'm going to call this a flip. Uh, it's Finished in cashmere beige metallic over ivory leather. Uh, it's got the sunroof. Everything else, yeah, it's pretty normal. It's got 211,000 miles, and it's offered at no reserve with a clean Carfax report and a clean California title in the seller's name. At least it's got that for it, uh, going for it. Uh, everything else is normal there. So the rear bumper is blemished and additional flaws, including peeling paint on the front bumper, scratches on the lower cladding, and a crack in the windshield and dents on the hood are visible in the photo gallery. Uh, one other thing regarding the plastic cladding, it extends here around the back, whereas that doesn't happen on the Land Cruiser version. Let's see. Yeah, these photos, are, yeah, they could be better. Uh, let's see. It's got some, yeah, it looks like just some highway tires uh, in the 275-70 R16 size. And let's see, a full-size spare is mounted to an under-chassis carrier. Yeah, that's standard. Uh, whether or not the tire has been updated or replaced with the others is unknown. And yeah, there's your interior. So the seats are upholstered in ivory leather. Uh, I'm guessing based on the condition, those have probably been recovered at some point. And let's see, we've got wear present on the headliner. Steering wheel seems like it's okay. A little bit of, you know, texture here at the top, but the original seams from the factory are in place. Uh, it's got some sort of like aftermarket, like radio or other controller here. Yeah, it kind of looks tacky in my opinion. Uh, let's see. And they've added 100 miles since September of 2022. So it yeah, clearly a flip. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm of the I, people can make money however they want. I, I don't really love the fact, and I talk about this in my videos, but I don't really love the fact of a vehicle changing hands just for the price to go up. That seems very, you know, I don't know, unnecessary, not very community. <laughs> uh, it's, Anyway, I don't mind if somebody puts in effort and, you know, they make it better and this and that, whether or not they want to, you know, make it so that their time's compensated or not. But, like, it looks like nothing, you know, they haven't really done any work to this. They're just, just for the pleasure of, you know, dealing with them, you get to pay more for it. Uh, but good for them. They found it first, I guess. Yeah, I guess. All right. So I was going to make a comment here about the uh, little boot here for the positive terminal. Yeah, it's not sitting in the right spot. <laughs> there's no terminal in the middle of the battery that should be over there. Uh, I'm sure there's other things going on, but we'll get to those in the photos. Nothing really else being described as far as yeah maintenance work being done here. Uh, it looks like it's got a clean Carfax, at least from that little snippet. We'll take a look at this in detail. Also, we'll be sure to grab the VIN here for the vehicle history report. Uh, but yeah, Arizona and California, you know, it doesn't look like we're going to see any surprises here. Uh, so it's been in California and the Bay Area since, yeah, 2,000, 50,000 miles. And not a lot of entries. Let's, all right, let's pull this up on vehiclehistory.com. Yeah, nothing comes up here. So 
yeah, nothing really to go there. Uh, one thing that we didn't do in the last video I did was just Google it. So yeah, nothing comes up either besides the uh, bring a trailer listing. So, all right, let's go ahead. There are, by the way, there are some videos. So be sure to check those out. Um, you know, get a sense for the uh, for the creeks and the things that don't work. Uh, we're going to focus on the photos. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump into those. Uh, I've got to zoom out to zoom in. All right. Yeah. So overall, yeah, pretty clean. Yeah. The colors here on this front bumper, yeah, don't look quite right, but that was noticed. It's a blemished front bumper. There's the ding here in the lower valence. Uh, gaps around the headlights and the grill, yeah, those seem fine. Uh, kind of get the sense that it's maybe a little bit of like a rattle job, but also this uh, little wing's not sitting as tight as it should. You can really see the shadows, you know, calling that out. Otherwise, yeah, it looks pretty pretty good. This color looks pretty nice for the most part. Uh, there's a little ding here in the hood. Also, there's something hanging down from the undercarriage. Uh, hopefully, we can get a shot of whatever that is. Um, yeah, overall, yeah, just pretty clean, pretty beige. Some damage on some some sun damage sun damage on the roof rack as you'd expect for a vehicle that's been in arizona and california it's life likely parked outside so we'll have to keep our eyes peeled for like a dash crack um and the paint doesn't seem particularly like shiny you know this color kind of reminds you of the the new lexus gx 550 whatever that um kind of brownish you know tan color is yeah it kind of looks like that you could uh yeah, get this and you know think you're special for <laughs> having that color uh anyway yeah overall it looks pretty good i would say the rear spoiler has been uh rattle canned uh and then yeah you can see the blemishes here on the back bumper um yeah all that yeah seems fine i feel like we're missing a couple emblems here on the back there i think there should be like a, a four-time like four-wheel drive or full-time all-wheel drive um emblem there on the back uh it could be indicative of you know damage that's been caused you know repaint um uh, let's see. Nothing else really jumping out at me. There is a bigger damage. They're kind of not showing it right, but yeah, it looks like maybe you know something a little bit bigger, like a dent here, um, just above the middle part of the trailer hitch. That is an aftermarket trailer hitch. It's not a Toyota hitch. Um, moving here to the passenger side, yeah, it seems pretty good. A little bit of a paint difference, perhaps, between the front fender and on the passenger side and the front door. Seems like a little bit more red, at least on my screen. Uh, so we'll be sure to look for Vince stickers up there in the engine bay. Hard to tell from this. It's not catching the sunlight quite right, but there is a little scuff here on the, um, what do you call it, this uh, fender flare. Yeah, overall, looks like a, you know, decent truck. Uh, hard to really tell if there's a yeah paint color difference here, uh, just because you've yeah, you've got just different lighting. But yeah, overall looks good. These photos they were obviously taken quite a bit ago. Um, things are yeah far drier here now, so yeah these photos are obviously a couple months old. Yep, overall looks good. Seems like things are pretty well aligned. You can see that dent really sticking out there, but yeah, everything else yeah looks about right. Uh, let's see, is that thing still hanging down? I yeah, can't really see it here. Maybe it was like a shadow. I don't I don't know. There was something hanging down in that other photo, photo though. All right, body shots, those look good. Yeah, the paint looks pretty good, at least from the side, so maybe not too sun damaged. You would expect to see the, yeah, like the clear coat on the fender flares, you know, kind of fading out and maybe even falling off, but it doesn't really seem to be the case here, so maybe the paint's okay. But yeah, maybe there's a little glimpse of that, or it could be a reflection. All right. All right. Let's get out of this. Uh, all these photos, uh, the antennas, you know, partway down that could be intentional. Uh, sometimes those, yeah, those break, uh, regarding the color difference, you can see it just really jump out at you here on this a pillar between the fender and the door. I, f I feel like there's something going on there, but yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. Uh, just some up close photos of this. This is what you would expect for yeah, sun damage on the paint you know, for life in California and Arizona. Yeah, overall, it seems like the body's pretty, pretty clean, pretty straight. Uh, I didn't see this one earlier. Oh, and you can definitely see the sun fade here on those fender flares, but yeah, it's some pretty gnarly scratches in the plastic cladding here. Uh, the little C where the pinch weld comes together in front of the, um, the rear wheels. Yeah, that looks good. Again, as you'd expect, you wouldn't really expect, you know, rust and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just kind of a tired front end paint job. It's got some, you know, it's got some rocks at some point. But overall, you know, not not bad for what, twenty six years old now. 
Uh, let's see. Windshield looks pretty good. Don't see any any huge cracks. Maybe a little crack here at the bottom right. Yeah, they've got a photo of that. Yeah, from a little chip. Okay. Good good on them for providing that detail shot. Well, three photos. Uh, overall, yeah, looks pretty pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Can I say that without <laughs> getting in trouble with uh, like copyright? Uh, fuel door looks good. Yeah, lots of lots of photos here. All right, moving here to the wheel wells. Uh, yeah, nothing. You know, the, the frame behind it that looks good. That photo is not really doing much besides showing the wheel and the tire. All right, moving to the interior. Uh, the seatbelt is definitely chewed up. Uh, I'm always curious how that how that happens, but anyway, it's chewed up. You can see a little texture here on the steering wheel here in the foreground as well. Otherwise, the yeah, interior looks pretty good. I think for sure, I'm pretty certain these seats have been recovered. They didn't mention that in the description, but yeah, it looks like a recovered job. You can you can see a little bit of difference. I would say the center console wasn't, so maybe there's like a little color difference. But yeah, there's no way that 200 and something thousand miles on this, um, yeah, those seats look like look like that. It's possible, but yeah, not likely. Uh, love love seeing like the little plastic from the original, like where they pull it off. Uh, love love seeing that in place. Uh, not quite sure what's causing this black artifact here at the bottom of the passenger side door sill. A uh, little bit of wear from people getting in and out. Carpets are a little dirty, but door jam looks good. Door card looks good. Seat looks good. I'd really be surprised if those seats aren't recovered. Uh, let's see. Oh, so this crack that we saw here, it is a little bit bigger. It comes into at least the middle part of the, uh, the passenger side of the front glass. So just keep that in mind. No, no cracks on the dash. That's kind of impressive. I thought for sure. Oh, in this photo just before you can see, yeah, there's some pretty gnarly texture there. I get the sense that would, you know, I don't know if it's just kind of like a, a, finish like a superficial type of you know coloring i kind of would expect that to wear off pretty quickly but um you know so maybe you know the leather kind of falls apart but yeah maybe you can keep that from falling apart looks like the shifter handle is in better shape than the leather on the uh, steering wheel which is a little surprising but yeah you've got this little yeah phone controls yeah no no thanks you know, you don't you don't drive one of these to have like the latest and greatest tech, that's for sure. But appreciate the original radio. Yeah, you can definitely see that texture here on the steering wheel leather. And back to the idea of you know sun damage. So this is why I'm surprised, honestly, that the dash isn't cracked. It's possible that it's been repaired. But look at this knob here. Like that thing is it's baked. It's totally baked. Um, so that and the steering wheel that all like lines up. Not having a crack in the dash doesn't. Um, not having any texture on the shifter handle doesn't line up with that. So it's just some things that are kind of like inconsistent. Uh, not, you know, it's not good or bad. It's just noting that there's, yeah, some, some differences in um, the apparent sun damage there. But overall, yeah, it seems pretty clean. Although, yeah, it would have been nice if they would, you know, it's like been sitting, I guess, to get the dust here on this part of the uh, cruise control stock. Anyway, 211,463 miles, uh, yeah, engine's off in that photo. In this one, the engine's on, good fuel pressure, uh, engine's cold, and um, or not fuel pressure, engine oil pressure. Uh, but yeah, water temperature's low, um, just because it's probably you know idling up, everything else looks normal. All right, so there's confirmation that we don't have the factory lockers, as we, again, as we expected. And yeah, overall, yeah, pretty clean, pretty clean interior. It's looking pretty good. Uh, it has the little rubber gasket here between the two center console pieces. So, yeah, I love love seeing that. I mean, it looks pretty mint from, you know, a couple feet away. That looks good. Yeah, if you pick this up, um, be sure to get the little center diff lock switch and plug that into the dash there. Um, you know, give you a, at least a selectable center diff lock that you can that you can use. All right, moving to the passenger front door and looking at the door card. Uh, yeah, no signs of paintless dent repair here. You can see a VIN sticker. Uh, so yeah, no worries there. Looking at the rear door, uh, yeah, the lights on. Door card looks good. I uh, can't see the VIN sticker here on this driver door, but door card to the extent. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, that all looks pretty good. Maybe we're missing a screw here on this cover. Maybe it's tucked in there. 
Um, not a big deal if it's if it's there or not. Looks like there's some stickers from yeah, I don't know something here in the door jam. Just kind of yeah, kind of sloppy, but not a big deal. And yeah, no paintless dent repair. Rear door card looks good. Nets are sagging on the seats, of course. But yeah, door cards look good. Speakers look good. Yeah, that screw, this is the driver door, so that, that screw on the uh, driver door handle, yeah, that's in place. So this, and this, by the way, this is such a cleaner look. I know people, you know, they think they're auto, audio files and they need a good, like, sound system. Again, like, don't remove these and put in some, like, awful-looking speaker. I know, it just looks so much more timeless here, in my opinion. All right, Vince sticker on the rear door, on the rear, uh, that's the driver's side quarter panel, and yeah, nothing besides a couple of scrapes and stuff, nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, second row looks good. Even the carpet looks good. Again, nets are saggy. They mentioned a little bit of wear on the headliner, not really seeing it. I mean, I see, we haven't really had a lot of photos of it, but I see one of the little plugs is missing on the grab handle. But overall, yeah, this looks, it looks fine. Uh, I will note that the seats like scooted up quite a bit. You know, these seats are known, the little gears in them, they're known to, you know, break and make it so you can't go up or down, can't go forward or back. Um, that could be the case here. So it's definitely something that uh, in the videos make sure that, you know, it shows the seats going yeah, forward and backward and that those are functional. Uh, third row looks good. Just some indentations from them being folded up. Yeah, third row looks great. Not really seeing, oh, I see. Maybe a little bit of discoloration here on the headliner on the driver's side above the driver head. Uh, hopefully we can get a better photo there. It looks like one of the plugs that the kind of fasteners that keeps the headliner in place. It looks like one of those is missing perhaps above the uh, driver's side second row. Uh, this little wiring, whatever here, this isn't normal. I'm not quite sure what that is. But yeah, overall, it looks pretty clean under there. Again, those seats, they're, they're pretty much all the way forward. Floor mats look good. Carpets look good. Uh, yeah, whatever, not, again, still not totally sure what this, like, little discoloration is, discoloration here is on the door sill. Uh, this piece is definitely kind of, like, chipped and cracked, but, yeah, not quite sure what, what's causing that black spot there, but, yeah, can't really tell. Under the HVAC stuff looks good. More pictures of the interior. Oh, so in the... Uh, it looks like on the headliner, there's some yeah, stains, maybe even some water stains, some little spots, but I still feel like there's some darkness here against the uh, yeah that uh, driver door sill. And I mentioned on the other side, the clip missing, looks like that's missing here on the uh, passenger side as well. That could be an indicator that the headliner came down at some point uh, due to maybe trying to fix a leak, um, you know, or tracking down a leak. So, yeah, just something to keep on your radar. Overall, it looks, looks pretty clean, though. Another telltale would be, you know, there's, at least on the Land Cruiser, there's, like, little speaker grills here. If those were kind of busted or they're missing, yeah, that could be another indicator that the headliner came down. But, you know, this little trim panel is not sitting quite where it should, but, yeah, probably not a big deal. Yeah, so that's interesting. So that, you know, the, the LX version does not appear to have these little speaker uh, cut, so that, that headliner is going to be a different part. There's your VIN sticker on your upper hatch. That all looks good. It looks like those bolts have never been turned. I, I love, by the way, I love these photos. Um, you know, getting the detail shot of those. That's, that's great. Uh, lots of scratches here on the underside of the upper hatch. No, everything else, yeah, looks, looks pretty good. Got the jack, got the tool kit. Yep, moving to the engine bay. All right, so we see a VIN sticker here on the driver's side, not seeing one on the passenger side. Remember, that's the one that I think maybe got repainted. So we'll we'll hope we can get another photo there. Um, yeah, engine bay looks good. Radiator looks, you know, relatively new. It looks like it's in good shop. All right, get us a photo. Okay, so there is a sticker on this far fender. However, we'll compare it to the other photo. I could be wrong, but that looks like a paint line to me. Uh, coming here across the top part of the fender. Let's take a peek at the other side. We did get a good photo and it kind of has a similar similar line there. So maybe it's not a paint line. Maybe just the sun was catching that, that fender a little weird. Um, but that's kind of all we get. Um, I will note that the 
spare, we talked about, or in the listing, it talked about how the it's got a full size spare. It's true. Uh, the wheels, however, don't match. So this is the LX style without the chrome. Um, I, yeah, looking at this, I wouldn't. I don't believe it's chrome. Um, and looks like it's a different style tire. So yeah, they're not. They're not matching. And it's upside down. <laughs> anyway, frame looks good. Exactly what you would hope for something that's been in Arizona and California its whole life. Uh, drive train here. This is, a, I believe, the transfer case. Maybe a little something there, but yeah, it looks pretty dry overall. And that's too far to tell anything, but the rear axle looks good. Uh, front axle, hard to tell if they've like wiped all this up you know, for purposes of the photos, but it's rust free nonetheless. And it would not be uncommon for there to be lots of leaks here at the front of the engine from all the normal uh, culprits, which are like the oil pump gasket, distributor O-ring, front mainsail, etc. cetera. Um, but you can see there's, you know, there is some grime down here that they've attempted to yeah, clean up. And maybe they resolved the leaks, maybe they just cleaned it up for the photos. You'll just have to kind of be the judge of that. And I think they're missing, not sure if they took it off intentionally, but it looks like maybe they're missing. There's a little like under tray here that goes just above the steering damper uh, that goes into these holes. So it looks like that's not present in these photos. Front knuckles look good. Yeah, rear body looks good. Again, this is exactly the type of vehicle you want to buy. Nice clean frame. Yeah, splendid. Look at that. And the rest of the country, all of those that live in the Rust Belt are, are jealous. Even seeing the original like zinc plating on these uh, transfer case bolts, yeah, it's got to make them pretty jealous. Just so clean. All right, good job on the undercarriage photos. Lots here. Kind of know what you're getting. Doesn't really seem like there's yeah much of any any leaks. Um, like even looking here forward, yeah, this all looks pretty dry. Um, so no, you know. Maybe not an oil pan sill leak. All that seemed pretty good. Again, this is a 97, so that's maybe more characteristic of some of the older ones, but um, definitely the newer ones can have those leaks too. But this one seems pretty dry. I mean, it basically looks like a brand new car. That looks great underneath. All right, so this is, okay, maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe they've addressed the leaks. Maybe they haven't, but they've made some efforts to clean up all the grime here. They did a pretty good job, but just know there could be there could be you know some oil leaks here so keep your keep your eye on that if you pick this up but good job on the undercarriage photos like there's so many this is great you really know what you're getting into uh yep yeah, yeah there's your VIN sticker and yeah, don't always like, I know I usually like gloss over these. If I was trying to find out for sure if like a, you know, the front fender had been removed, like on this case, this is the, you know, the front driver fender, like that bolt doesn't look like that's been touched. So it's a good, good chance that, that front fender on the um, passenger side never, never came off. And that the discolorations we were seeing is probably nothing. So don't always just glaze over those photos. They can sometimes provide good information. Yeah, really clean overall. Um, yeah, it's got some age-related things, uh, but yeah, for the most part, yeah, pretty pretty clean truck. Uh, miles are decent. Um, yeah, in California, so so there's that. Yeah, there's there's a good chance this will go into the. It seems crazy to say it, but yeah, this will go probably into the low twenties. I mean, this is exactly why I <laughs> kind of like stopped making videos for <laughs> for a couple weeks. Is like I just don't think this is worth twenty twenty thousand dollars. It, it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to say. Well, that's what it'll it'll go for when you like don't agree with it. Um, before the pandemic, before kind of all the craziness in like twenty nineteen, first part of twenty twenty, like this maybe sells for especially at this mileage back then. Um, you know, I don't I don't think it's selling for more than like ten grand. Um, you know, super clean ones that are like in the one seventies. Um, you know, 150, 160, 170 thousand miles. Like they were going for ten grand. So. Um, but things have changed and yeah, this will probably, we'll, we'll say, we'll say 21 and yeah, we'll see where it ends up, but yeah, pretty clean truck. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you, yeah, if this is something you're interested, hopefully this is helpful and yeah, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.